Namaste. This is Saroja Gullapalli from Melbourne, Australia. I'd like to extend warm welcome to all the viewers of PMC Global Channel. Today, we are up to episode 15 of the Wisdom Series sharing session of the untold story of Sita. Before we start our session, I would like to express my gratitude to Brahmashri Pitama Patriji and Dena Madam. I would like to request you all to join me for two minutes meditation before we start today's session. So cross your feet, lock your fingers, gently close your eyes and be with your breath. Go deep within yourself. With the help of your breath. As you go within yourself, connect to your inner stillness. Connect your consciousness, my dear masters. Let's invite the energies of Sita Mata and Hanumanji onto our platform today. Gently rub both your palms together and place them on your closed eyes. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Gently remove your palms and open your eyes slowly. So, Welcome to the episode 15, my dear masters. As we continue our story forward, which Soma is sharing with Anasuya and her mother. After the visit from Parvati Ma and Mahadev, Mata seemed more, in, more inwardly and she was less accessible except for the children. When it was children, she would pay all her attention she, she was spending more and more time alone, except for the time she was spending with the children. And when Soma asked, Mata say, said that Mahadev had given her a blessing, which was enabling her to connect with Parvati Ma inwardly, while she could still perform her activities. And uh, inwardly, Mata seemed to have gained a new strength, but Soma could see that on physical plane, Mata's life force was weakening and Soma thought that now Mata has decided to leave this earth plane and that's the reason why she can see her physical energy depleting. But Mata had an amazing way of erasing any negative thoughts from people's mind. So because of that, Soma gradually lost the fear of Mata's departure. Soma did not think about it much in the next few months, but she observed certain changes um, she, when she would go with Mata into the forest, uh, she watched as Mata wandered into the forest uh, and stood before a tree or if she would gaze at an animal or a plant, it was with such tender care Mata was looking at these things. Sometimes Mata would just run her hands on the bark of a tree or she would just stand there resting her back against the trunk of a tree and just close her eyes. And, and in those moments, a smile would burst on Mata's face 
and Soma knew that Mata was sending her love to that tree. And at the same time, she was also receiving love from that tree. And once when such, such an incident was happening, Mata says to Soma, look Soma, I see him in every ray of sun, in every leaf, in every plant. And here, there, everywhere, I see my beloved Narayana. Where he is not, I can see him everywhere. And Mata is just lost in that presence of Narayana, in the presence of love. So it shows that Mata is preparing for her journey back home. And she can see Narayana everywhere. And um, Sri Ram would try to come as frequently as he could because Sri Ram now knows that it is Mata's last year, as Mahadev has told him. And very soon Mata will be leaving this physical abode or physical body of hers. And uh, Love and Kush have been slowly growing up and as they were getting older, they would spend a lot of time in their education in the ashram. And one time when Sri Ram comes to visit his family to ashram and Soma sees that they're all four of them happily sitting in the garden and Mata is laughing and she's playing with her two sons who are not so young anymore. They are taller than Mata now. But for Mata, they both are their, her sons. She was having such a good time trying to pull them both into her lap, even though, you know, they're so tall boys now. But they would laughingly pull themselves back, but she would draw them close again. And this was a, such a beautiful game going on between the two children and the mother. And Soma sees that Sri Ram was watching their play with such great amusement. And as uh, Soma was seeing the family together so happy, suddenly a feeling of sadness came over Soma as she just notices that she can see on a few strands of silver hair on Mata's, um, which is surrounding Mata's beautiful face. And then when she sees a bit more carefully, she can see that Mata has, you know, like a small uh, footprint around her eyes, you know, like sunken eyes or shallow lines. And she can also see that Mata's che cheeks are thinning and she's thinking, no doubt Mata is very beautiful even now, but she can see the threat of age, you know, waiting to ripen on Mata's face. And then the next thought that comes to Soma is, Mata, I cannot bear to see you age because she always wants to see her Mata young and energetic all the time. But then this thought of hers, Sri Ram catches her thought. And then she sees that he goes to um, Sita when the boys have left them and they have gone. He comes to her laughingly and says, Sita, in a very tender voice and says, you're even more beautiful now than I have met you first. And uh, he sat next to um, Soma and looked at, uh, sorry, he, Sri Ram says, sits next to Sitama and looks at her so tenderly um, and says, Sita, it is the truth what I'm saying because I'm seeing you more beautiful than ever because for the love and joy that you are now pouring out, I have no words to describe your beauty. And um, that's, that, that's what reminds Soma that, you know, how she had been seeing Mata's external beauty but Sri Ram has reminded that Mata still looks great and beautiful with all the love and joy she's pouring. So indirectly, he's telling Soma to look at the internal beauty, not the external beauty. And she says to Sri Ram, thank you, Prabhu. You always catch my thoughts when I'm going in the negative direction. I'm really grateful for you correcting me. And then Soma says that when she looks upon the last year of Mata's um, existence, um, it felt like Mata was saying goodbye to all the things she loved on the earth. She was feeling everywhere so much love, so much love. Even with the children, she, when she was spending time with them, she was engaging herself in serious con conversation. She would take every moment to make sure that they were developing um, mentally and emotionally. And she was reminding them all the things that were quite important to them as they go into their future. And she, it appeared that no moment was lost or wasted in that last year of Mata. And months passed by, um, but Mata's joy was as much as ever. It was palpable as ever she could see, um, Soma could see. And 
Soma thought, Mata looks so joyful. I don't think she's going to leave, leave us. That's how Mata's happiness was looking. So when Sri Ram came, they both often wandered into the forest um, and Sri Ram would hold Mata's hand and they happily would go into the forest and meditate for, meditate for hours. Now the year was coming to a close since that extraordinary event with Parvati Ma and Mahadev um, has happened, but this still there was no indication of any change in situation. Then one night when um, Soma was bringing Mata's evening drink um, and she just uh, about to, she was just about to enter Mata's cottage when she heard Mata speaking with someone in the cottage and uh, the other voice, Soma knew it wasn't Sri Ram's voice, she wasn't sure who was there, so she wasn't sure whether she should enter or not. So she knocks at the door and uh, Mata asks Soma to come inside. And Soma, with her drink for Mata, goes inside the cottage. And when she sees who, who is there in Mata's cottage, she sees Janak Baba. She over, she's so much overcome with emotion that the drink slips from her hand because she's so happy to see Janak Baba. Uh, first she's unable to move and then she goes running to him and falls on the floor and puts her head on his forehead and all she can say is Baba, that's all she can say and Janak Baba is so happy to see Soma, he places his hand on um, Soma's head and lifts her and says, um, Soma, I'm so indebted to you for taking such care of Sita all of these years and he says, you were always so devoted to Sita and your devotion has never changed or never wavered. And then raising Soma's head. Um, so she then she dries her eyes and she says to Baba, Baba, you gave me the great honor to be able to serve Sita Ma. Um, and then she sees all the mess she has created. But Mata says, don't worry about the drink that's fallen down. Let's go and prepare some nice food for, for Janak Baba. And then that event, Soma says, is so was so good because she had another chance to see Janak Baba after all the time. And when uh, Janak Baba leaves uh, next um, next day, when Soma comes to visit Mata, she asks Mata, "Why why did Janak Baba uh, come in this manner, like without any announcement, so quickly?" Then Sita Ma is looking in the distance, and she says, "Do you remember Soma when I was very young in the forest?" and went so deep in meditation that I almost didn't return into my physical body. So we have talked about this incident, my dear friends. You remember when Mata um, sits in deep meditation in um, Mithila and then Janak Baba and Sages, nobody is able to um, bring her back. And then Soma remembers it and she says, yes, I will never forget that day, Mata. It was Sri Ram who brought you back, although you hadn't met him then. It was then that you saw your future with him. And Mata smiled and she says, yes, you remember Soma. If that's the case, then you should also remember I made a promise to Pitaji, Janak Baba, that I would not leave this body without his permission. Do you remember? And Soma says, yes, I remember. And then Mata says, that's why he has come. He has come to help me fulfill that woe. And she says, my father can see into the past and future. Nothing escapes his view. And then Mata um, starts talking about the present and she says, okay, now, you know, let's get on with our job. But Soma does not, though she listens to what Mata is saying, but she's not able to comprehend on the meaning. Mata is saying that, actually Mata, what Mata is saying is, I made a promise that before I leave my body, I will take father's per permission. And that's why he has come to give me permission that you can now leave your body. Because he knows that if he does not give permission, she can't leave. So as he can see past and future, this visit is basically to tell Sita that yes, you can leave your body and go. But so, so Ma's love for Mata is so deep that she doesn't even want to think about Mata's leaving. So that's how <laughs> that um, incident with Janak Baba happens. A few weeks later, an extraordinary event take took place, says Soma. It was just as the sun was setting and the light was just going dim. And sometimes we see in sunset, you know, such beautiful hue and colors appear on the sky. It was one of such evenings when the sky was filled with a pink softness 
and the colors in the sky were so nourishing. Mata and Soma both steps out of the cottage and they were looking, just taking the scene in because it was so beautiful. And Mata, uh, Soma says to Mata, Mata, look at the sky, it is so beautiful. And Mata says, yes. And they both are happily enjoying this scene. And just then two yogis, they see they are coming from the forest towards the cottage, a woman and a man. And as they come closer, they recognize Anasuya and Atri. So Mata is always happy to see Anasuyama. She hurries down the path and then brings them into the garden area. You know, she shows them the seat and she has hardly settled them. And she sees two more are coming from the forest, Arundhati Ma and Vasista. And then one after another keeps coming and she's bringing them in and showing them seats and then Kyati Ma and Brugh Maharshi and after that Lopa Mudra and Agasyama and after that many great sages who come one after another and they get seated in the garden. So Ma is wondering what is all this happening? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to prepare food for all that, for all these people? And she looks at Mata, but she can understand that even Mata is not prepared for, for this. And she can't go and discuss with Mata because Mata is in midst of so many yogis and yoginis. So once all these uh, so sages are seated, then they look towards the forest and they see a group of celestial beings who are coming towards the cottage, not one or two. They're coming in big groups of 10 and 12. And Mata knows all of them, but Soma could not recognize. She knows some, but not everybody. And as all these celestial beings are coming towards the cottage, Mata is receiving them with love and, 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 and paying her homage to each one of them by um, joining her hands. And she brings them all and making them seated in the beautiful garden. But Soma says our garden, could not accommodate everyone because there were so many of them. So they found places wherever they could and some standing at the edge of the forest, some outside the cottage, some inside the cottage. So they all seem to be waiting for someone and both Mata and Soma do not understand why they have come, who they are waiting for. And finally looks like the pair that they have been waiting for is arriving. And then Soma and Mata sees the most beautiful pair coming from the forest, walking down the path of the cottage. And Soma recognizes them as Parvati Ma and Mahadev. So they both approach Mata and Mata pranams to them. And then Mata whispers in Parvati Ma's ear and says, what is this? Why is everyone coming now? And then Parvati Ma with a beautiful smile says, Sita, it is your wedding day. Sri Ram has invited us all. Mata can't believe it. She says, my wedding? I'm soon leaving the earth. Where's the question of my wedding? And then Parvati Ma says, this is your celestial wedding. Sri Ram wanted every one of us to join here and witness your reunion in the celestial world. And hence we have all come here to see your celestial wedding, Sita with Sri Rama. Mata is so confused. She's wearing such ordinary clothes of ashram. And just as this thought crosses Mata's mind, Parvati Ma transformed Mata's simple ascetic dress into a beautiful celestial garment of magnificent beauty. And with a smile, um, Parvati Ma and Mahadev, they go and sit um, in the garden. And the moment they sit in the garden, a beautiful stage crops up out of nowhere. And the whole arrangement is like so celestial, so beautiful. And then Mata sees Sri Ram coming out of the forest and walking down the pathway where everyone is. And he's also clothed, dressed in very celestial garment. He stops in front of um, Sitama and smiles and looks into her eyes with so much love. And Sitama realizes that he has done all this to make her happy. And Soma realized that Sri Ram wanted Sitama to depart this world in a scene of great joy and celebration. And hence he has arranged all this. And now Sri Ram taking Sitama's hand, he leads her to the dais and Soma can see there's a canopy of light that's enfolding them both as they stand on the dais and everyone is quiet. And Sri Ram, for some time, he does not speak, but just looks at everyone with such great wave of love, which sweeps everybody who is present there. And finally he says, I have asked you to come to be with us, to witness the love that Sita has awakened in this creation the love 
that was embedded in the universe, waiting to be aroused. It is her love that will sustain Mother Vasundhara Ma during her difficult times. Her love that will guide the humanity forward. It's her love, but there's no distinction between her love or my love. It is the same. He keeps looking at Sita Ma while he's talking. And Soma is watching this whole scene with amazement. She's sitting at the door of the Sita Ma's cottage and watching all this. And then Sri Ram looks at the whole gathering and says, and for the love Sita has displayed and for Sita's service to this creation, we are most grateful. So he's saying thank you to Sita for all that she has done since she has come onto this earth, for the love she has displayed, for all the service she has done for Sita Ma and the nature. Then he turns towards the sages and says, to you all who have sacrificed your lives and you have left your places in the celestial sphere to serve this world, I'm so grateful. And he's thanking and honoring everyone who is there then he turns towards the devas and devis and says, you people maintain the balance of the world. Without you, there would be no natural order. And I'm so grateful to you. And then he turns towards the four people, Mahadev, Parvati Ma, Saraswati Ma, and Brahmadev. And he expresses his love saying, without you, there would be no words, no life. It is you who is giving rise to everything that is and making sure that progression is happening all the time in this universe. And while Sri Ram is talking, a great light is emanating from his being. And he then turns to Sita Mata, but he is not able to speak for some time. And then he says to Sita Ma, I have no words to describe the one who is my guiding star, the sustainer of so many universes, the one without whom I'm not. And Mata is continuing to look at Sri Ram with fixed eyes and an expression of great peace and joy because she's so much taken, blown away by all the love that Sri Ram is, is flowing towards her. And then after he spoke these words, he fell silent. And then Mata says, the love you describe, the love that sustains this creation is a love that only you can awaken, Rama. I may express it, I may spread it through the universe, but it is you who have awakened in me. We remember how many times, you know, when Mata is about to leave her body, Sri Ram brings her back. And whenever Sita Ma sees into Sri Ram's eyes, you know, she feels her connection to her existence. And that love that Sita Ma spreads in this universe, Sita Ma says, that has been awakened because of Sri Rama, that love between the couple, you know, they're giving credit to each other. Such a great way of, you know, a companionship. Then Sri Ram says to everybody, when Sita returns to our celestial home, she will take with her a part of me because there can be no separation between Sita and me. At that moment of time, there is this voice coming from all the directions, Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Sita Ram. And it's a beautiful chanting going on all the time. And while this is going and now uh, it's late in the night and Soma is saying, thinking, How, what do I do about the food for all this? And just at that time, she sees there are these celestial attendants who are coming with loads of food, baskets of food and trays of food. And then Soma helps them to place the food trays in front of all the people who have come. And after they finish the meal, um, the attendants, the celestial attendants who have brought the food, take the trays and they took the trays and baskets away and they disappeared into the forest. And then Soma tells us that after having the meal, everyone sits in meditation while the chanting of Jai Sita Ram is just happening from all over. And Soma is sitting at the cottage door and watching them all meditate with the chanting around. And she doesn't know while listening to the beautiful chanting, she's already drifted into sleep. And when she wakes up, she can hear the birds stir. So it must be early morning hours. Now the birds have started to stir. And then she looks in the garden. Everyone is gone except Mata and Sri Ram. They are now not dressed in their celestial garments. They're in normal ascetic clothing. They're seated in the garden. Sri Ram is still in meditation. And Sita Ma, she's resting behind, beside him with her head in his lap. And there's no sign of anyone else. 
and she's thinking about the scene. Soma now thinks about the scene of, about what happened the previous night. And just then Mata wakes up and she comes to um, Soma and she says, I'm so glad, Soma, that you had a chance to witness everything that happened the previous night. And then Soma says, Mata, last night was a... And Ma Mata says to Soma that last night, whatever happened was a great blessing for all the earth creatures and Vasundra Ma for having such great people all congregate on earth at one time and she says to soma it was ram's gift to the world but soma says i don't know about sri ram's gift to the world mata but one thing i know that it was an expression of his love for you uh, and mata says is there any difference between me and this world um, soma and soma does not understand what mata means because many times mata says things which the deeper meaning soma is not aware of but Soma just nods her head. And that morning, Soma sees Mata hardly spoke. Her conscious was, consciousness was very interiorized, inward looking. She asked to spend some time with the children alone in her cottage. So Soma brings the children to her. Uh, an hour passed and they're still inside. And when Sri Ram emerged from meditation, he asks where Sitama is. And Soma tells him that she's inside with the children. He goes inside as well, and the four spend some time together. And finally, Sri Ram and Sitama come out of the cottage, and they tell Soma and Hanuman, who is sitting there, that they are going into the forest for meditation. So just before walking into the forest, Sitama comes to Soma, and she draws her close and holds her tight. But then Soma feels that she has heard a sigh from Sitama. And when Sitama releases her, she goes to Hanuman and holds his hand for some time. And then she starts walking with Sri Ram into the forest for meditation. And as Soma sees them going for meditation, she thinks I should follow them with water and basket of fruit. But then Mata says, no, Soma, stay with love and Kush because they will need you. And then she continued walking. And when Hanuman heard these words that Soma is, uh, Mata says to Soma, he cries, Mata, because he, when Hanuman starts crying, that is when Soma realizes what was happening. And she's so panicked. And in, in her mind, she's thinking, Mata, you're leaving this world, aren't you? And the moment that thought comes into Soma, Mata stops. She turns to Soma and she says, how can I leave this world, Soma, when I am the world? And you of all people should know this. Saying that, she again turns around and goes, starts going to the forest. At that time, Hanuman starts to follow them. Then she says to Hanuman, Putra, son, you must stay back. You have to look after Soma and the children. And Soma says that tears roll down the cheeks of Hanuman. And he says, Mata, Mata says, you should not cry. This is a time for joy. Saying that they both vanish into the forest. Hours passed, and the children have gone to the hermitage for their lessons. And Soma tries to fiddle around with all the work around, but she's not able to focus in her work. And then after a while, she thinks, "No, I'm. I have to see my Mata." And she fills a jug of water and takes a basket of fruit and goes. She knows where to find Mata. And while she's going out, she sees Hanuman is sit, still sitting by the gate, waiting for either both of them or just one of them to return back. And he's so sad. And when Soma goes there into the um, forest, she knows there is a large boulder in the clearing where they both used to sit and meditate. And then she says to Anasuya, can you see outside that boulder? That is the boulder where Sita Ram used to come and meditate. Um, and that's why I've got this heart build exactly close to that so that I can always see that place where they both used to meditate and then she continues her story saying I when I went there with food and water I found them meditating and I put the food there and the moment I put the food down Mata opened her eyes and she thanks Soma saying thank you Soma thank you for everything you have done and then she closed her eyes again so then Soma turns and she's about to go back to her cottage. But something made Soma turn her back as if there's a great pull coming from Mata. So she swings around and just in time she swings around to witness Mata's absorption in the world. 
and that scene that soma describes about martha's absorption in the world is beautiful she says i first saw a great light coming out of martha's body and that encompassed shri ram and then spread out from both of them so that light which starts from martha now encompasses shri ram and now it feels like that light is coming from both of them that light divides into many points of light and spreads in all the direction feels like a rain is falling a light rain from the sky pouring into the earth you know covering the forest soma says everywhere i look these points of light streamed over the earth and sky it's beautiful sight rivers of light pouring out from the spot where mata's body has been because in that light she can't see mata's body all she can see is this is a big source of light it is like a river of light coming out and as soma follows the stream of light this light is breaking into multitude of colors like a rainbow and finally when the light cleared when she tries to look for mata soma saw that her form was no longer there so mata's body has transformed into light and encompassed in the whole world it has become one with the earth the sky with everything and soma is just fixed to the spot seeing this amazing akras and by the time she understands and she gets over the scene she sees mata's body is no more there she is filled with despair and she runs back to cottage and there she finds hanuman and lakshmana lakshmana who has come the night before because he knew what had happened hanuman tries to calm down soma but lakshman the moment he hears what has happened he runs to where shri ram is that night lakshman stays with shri ram and next morning when they both um, come back from forest soma falls on shri ram's feet and says mata is gone she's gone from us and shri ram gently lifts her and says with calmness soma she's only gone if you think you're gone do not let your mind deceive you if mata is gone this world would not exist it would cease the next few days soma says it passed like a dream and now shri ram prepares love and kush for the reality of their mother's transformation so he explains everything to them how their mother transformed into light so that they understand what happened to their mother and then it was decided that the boys would divide their time between the hermitage and um, ayodhya because now shri ram thinks that they should also know about how ayodhya they're growing up and so hanuman has now taken the caring role for soma because before sita ma goes she asks hanuman to look after anusuya um, soma and the children so when um, very soon it is time for love and kush to shift um, to ayodhya permanently and at that time shri ram um, pleaded soma to come with her but soma says i couldn't leave this place this is the place where my mata spent the time before she left her body i don't want i won't belong to ayodhya or the palace anymore shri ram so prabhu let me let me live here this is where the memories of my mata resides so shri ram allows her to stay there years pass soma says and there came a time when soma was missing mata terribly you know she says that even during the time of exile she never felt sita ma's absence but this was different now she knew she she could never get sita ma back and one day the sorrow becomes so much it's so overwhelming that so much as falls onto the ground crying and calling out to asundara ma why have you taken my mata why can't you take me to and she's she's lost her mind and she's crying just then she hears footsteps and then two arms lifting her from the ground and when she sees it's shri rama and he says why this dear soma and she says prabhu the only purpose of my life was to serve my mata now she is gone and shri ram says gone have you forgotten what she said to you that day what she says that she and the world is same but then soma says prabhu i cannot see her i cannot feel her presence so even though she has told me so many things i'm not able to comprehend all that when shri ram says sometimes we human cannot see what is right in front of us look soma you can see her stepping out of the sunlight see her beautiful form that rising from this earth look soma 
open up your eyes, you'll see her everywhere. Saying that, he gently taps her on the forehead. And the moment Sri Ram taps Soma on the forehead, Soma says that I started seeing Sitama. I saw her smiling at me, stepping out from, you know, between the streams of sunlight, emerging from the earth. And she could see Mata swaying in the gentle breeze all around her. And Soma says she was everywhere I could see. And then that made Soma happy forever because now she knew she had seen for herself. Mata really hadn't left her. And Sri Ram has been so kind that when that incident happens, he stays with her for some time before she leaves. But when Sri Ram leaves, he has left his blessings with Soma too. And after that, Soma has never been sad that Mata has left her because everywhere she looks, she sees Mata and she knows Mata is with her. So Soma says that she she got those uh, hermitage people to uh, build her this small hut in front of um, this uh, boulder where Sri Ram and Mata used to meditate. And she says to Anasuya, this is how I came to live here. And every year Sri Ram would bring the boys on the anniversary of Mata's transformation. And I also had the opportunity when they brought their daughters, Love and Kush, that I could hold them in my hands just as I promised Mata that I would hold her granddaughters. Remember that incident when Mata says that, says to Love and Kush, that I won't be there to see your beautiful daughters. But she says to Soma, you will see them, Soma, and you will hold them. And through your touch, I will feel my granddaughters. Through your sight, I will see my granddaughters. So Soma says that I fulfilled my promise. But and she says to Anasuya, but since Sri Ram left his body, I don't see Love and Kush that much. And then Soma tells um, Anasuya about the incident um, when Sri Ram leaves his body. And she says that I learned from Hanuman about the time when Sri Ram left, the body, left his body. And Hanuman explains this to Soma that early one morning, uh, just before dawn, Sri Ram arose and he went, went to Saryu Nadi for meditation. He found a quiet spot and didn't want to be dis disturbed. At that time, Hanuman was far away, but he suddenly felt a call from Sri Rama. So with great speed, he runs to meet Sri Rama in Ayodhya and he sees Sri Rama in meditation. Suddenly, he sees Sita Mata coming, approaching Sri Rama. And no one can see, but Hanuman can see that. And as Sita Mata is approaching Sri Ram, Hanuman asked her sadly, Mata, now you have come to take my lot too. Then take me as well. I have no purpose here to stay. And Sita Mata shakes her head and says, Putra, son, you must stay here until the cycle of this time ends. You must feed the world on our behalf. You must spread the love that we brought onto this earth on our behalf. And Hanuman says, I don't know if it was, if Sitama said this or if Shriram said that, but I could hear both their voices as I was hearing these words. And then Mata sat down beside Shriram. And the moment Mata sat down, Shriram opened his eyes and looked at Hanuman and said, Hanuman, you are our eyes and ears. You are our feet and hands. You will be feeding and serving the world. And that love that we have brought onto this earth you will arouse that in everyone and you will spread it. And that is why you have come to this world, Hanuman, so that our love, you can carry that forward through this cycle of time. And after Sri Ram said these words, he closed his eyes and then Mata placed her hand upon his hand and Sri Ram's body dissolved into million points of light, just like how Sita Mata's body turned into, turned into a great light and filled everywhere, the earth, the sky, the nature around. Just like Sita Mata left her physical body, so did Sri Rama. And Hanuman says, when the light cleared, neither of the form was present, neither Sita Mata was there, nor Sri Rama. In this way, Sri Rama too returned to their celestial home. So Soma explains this incident as well to Anasuya, which she has heard through Hanuman. And so as Soma is telling this story, she suddenly sees at the door, there is this um, yogi who is standing, who's quite tall, he's in the doorway and he looks at him with surprise and says, so you have come after such a long time. And Anusuya feels that whoever this yogi is, such a tall yogi who's not even fitting in the doorway, 
must be very close to Soma because she can suddenly see so much happiness on Soma's face. And that yogi says, forgive me, Soma, I was far away. I heard you saying the names of Sri Rama and Sitama. So I had to come running. And I thought it would be good if I bring your guests some food. So that, that yogi brings a big basket of fruits for all the people who have joined. And when Anusuya looks around, there are so many yogis, sadhus, people who are all sitting there listening the story of Sitama and Sri, Sri, Sri Ram through Soma. And then Soma touches the feet of that yogi and says, it is enough for me to catch the sight of you. I'm so happy. And then that yogi um, leaves and disappears. So looking at Soma, Anusuya knows that whoever that yogi was, he had a great effect on, on Soma. That Anusuya's mom says to Soma, Soma, we will never be the same after hearing your stories of Maharani Sita and Sri Rama. I feel now as if I know them personally, the way you told the story, I feel that they're very near and dear to us. And Soma says they are near and dear because they care for each one of us as if we are all their children. And she says, I've come to know Mata and Sri Rama much better since their departure from the physical world. And she says, departure is not that great word. It's like since, you know, we have, they have left the physical form. And Soma says that Mata and Sri Ram did so much work when they were here on the earth. But once they have the limitation of physical body gone, they are doing much greater work. And Soma says that I see their hand in everything that happens in this world. I see her Mata's form walking through the forest, a flicker of her form everywhere. And I know she has come to remind me that she's not gone anywhere. And then Anasuya's mom says, we will remember this all the time. I don't know how we can leave you, but we have to depart tomorrow because we have a long journey home and Anasuya's father is waiting for, for us. Hearing that, Anasuya says, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to spend my rest of the life with um, Soma. Mom, can you leave me? And then her mother says, no, that's not, that's not right. So... Um, Seeing Ansuya cry, Soma says, why don't you leave your daughter for tonight with me? And then, you know, tomorrow she can, she'll be ready to come with you. So that night, Ansuya spends her night with Soma. And after her mother leaves, Soma says, look, I'm going to prepare you a good drink, a warm drink. This is the drink I used to prepare for Sita Mata every night before she went to bed. And it will help you, Ansuya. And then Soma says, uh, Suya says, Soma, please convince my mother so that I can stay with you. I want nothing but to serve you. I want to live with you here. I just don't want to go. And she starts crying. And Soma comes to her and says, child, you must go because I am nearing the end of my life. Soma is so old. You can remember this is Anasuya's next life. She says, I'm nearing the end of my life, whereas you're beginning your life. You have to let go your past, Anasuya. You have to look forward to the future. And then Anasuya starts crying and she says, I can't see the future, Soma. I, I don't know about my past. I can't see the future. So, but the only thing I feel being here is I feel a peace inside me when I'm with you. I'm so peaceful. I don't want to leave this place. And then Soma says to her, the peace that you're feeling is Mata's peace. It's her presence. And she said, through the story I have told you, I have enabled you to feel her again. So she's telling Ansuya indirectly that you had this peace with you once. And now by the story, I have reminded that peace, which was always with you. And she says, Ansuya, that is why you have come all the way from Ayodhya to meet me. So hold on to that feeling of peace. And doesn't matter where you are, Mata will guide you in your life. Just keep, keep your hold on that peace. And then Ansuya's tears cease for some time, but she wants to understand what Soma is saying. She says, what do you mean? And then Soma handed her this drink and she said, you have this drink, then you will sleep. Okay, listen to me carefully. You may not understand what I'm saying, but inside you, you will know it's true. And then she explains to Ansuya, your past birth was in Mithila as a servant in the Janaka's household. 
and she says it was not you alone we both served janaka together and anasuya in that life of yours you were very devoted to mata and she explains to anasuya that we came together to ayodhya from mithila after sitama's wedding but when sitama went on exile you did not live to see mata's return and then she also says that during your life in mithila there was a young man in janak baba's household who wanted to marry you but your father would not let you marry and he forbid you to marry so you never married and that is the cause why you are still resisting to marry somewhere deep inside you you remember that your father insisted that you cannot marry in that life of yours ansuya he was afraid that day that something terrible would happen to you if you got married and this young man about whom we are talking he is a great young man and mata was very fond of him because in mithila he took care of the animals and had so much love for them and mata once said to soma that nobody loved the animals like that young man did and she was grateful to him for this and now she tells to anasuya that man now has taken birth in ayodhya anasuya and he is the one your father has chosen for you to marry so go back to ayodhya accept him because he has great love for mata and if you get married to him you both you know can share your love for mata and take mata's love forward and soma says this is mata's design so when mata returned with hanuman so remember mata goes with hanuman in meditation to ayodhya and comes back and tells uh, soma that she has seen so many people in ayodhya who were initially born in mithila and in this birth they have taken their birth in ayodhya and mata says she has recognized them all and soma says i know why they have all taken birth in uh, ayodhya now it is their love for mata that drew them to ayodhya after their death and so she says to um, anasuya you may you may have been born in mithila in your last life but it is your love for mata that you have come back and you have reborn again in ayodhya because it's it's your love for mata but anasuya cannot remember any of the, these things that soma is saying so soma says don't worry if you don't remember there is a reason for everything it's better not to dwell on the past what's the point of you knowing don't need to know know your previous life i'm just telling you um but what you should be interested in in the future to see what this life has to offer you because anasuya you'll find many surprises ahead so cling to mata as best as you can and then she says and then she says that just before shri ram left his body he says to hanuman both mata and shri ram says says to hanuman it's a combined voice that hanuman hears that the love that permeates the celestial world now also permeates the earth and all her creatures so what they are saying is that great divine love that used to be in those divine worlds mata and shri ram has brought them into this earth and all their creatures but the voice that hanuman hears continues and it says it is the human being it is say but it's the human being who has the potential and power to awaken this love and they say to hanuman you are the perfect expression of love hanuman you must seek to awaken this potential in all so what mata and shri ram before shri ram's departure says to hanuman is we have brought that love from the celestial world to this earth but it's all in the form of seed in form of potential in every one of the human being it is for the beings to awaken their love and they have handed this responsibility to hanuman because you are the perfect expression of this love hanuman you must seek to awaken the potential in all and so must convey this message to anasuya and says that this was their last message to everyone to awaken our own potential for love and she says to anasuya love cannot be just an idea it has to become real and how can it become real anasuya by loving others you get married show your husband the same love you know 
I have spoken about all this love in last few days in Martha's story. Show this love to your husband. Let the love between Martha and Sri Ram shine in your life, Anasuya, with your husband. This is what we all must do. And she says, don't worry, Anasuya. Take some rest before you leave tomorrow. And after listening to all this, the thought of returning to Ayodhya was no longer painful for Soma. There was some, for Anasuya, there was something very soothing in Soma's word, words. And then she has the drink. And then as she lays on her bed, she drifted into a sound sleep. And in that sleep, Anasuya sees a great vision. She sees that there was this brilliant light, totally different quality. She knows it's a different world. It's, it's, it's a different world she is in. And the thought came to Anasuya that this is the light that Soma talked about before Sri Ram and um, Sitama dissolved into this um, creation. And the moment this thought comes, she sees that there is a beautiful formation of light happening. And that light transforms into the body of Sri Ram. And then a great love is emanating from Sri Ram. And out of this form of Sri Ram, rose the body of Mata Sita. So it's such a beautiful scene that Anasuya is seeing in her sleep that this beautiful light turns into Sri Ram and out of Sri Ram this divine love is pouring out which then converts into Mata Sita. And then Sita Ma steps out of the light, looks at Anasuya with love and she says, Anasuya, forget what has happened. Forget what has passed. A new life has begun for you. Will you help us create the world that is yet to be born? She asks Anasuya. Anasuya says, yes, Mata, I will, I will. And then the light disappears and Anasuya opens her eyes and sees that what a great scene she has seen. And then she sees Soma is sitting beside her. And then Soma says to her, never think that Mata is gone. She resides within all of us, helping every moment to awaken the world to the love she embodied. And she says to Anasuya, Mata is more active now that all her physical limitations are gone. She can be with each one of us. And Anasuya is just listening. She thinks, how does she know that I, I've talked to Mata? Um, and then Soma says, you received what you needed last night. So then Anasuya understands that Soma knows that she has seen Mata in her vision. And then Soma says, your mother will be here soon, Anasuya. We should be ready. And then so after she asks Anasuya, are you ready to go return now? And Anasuya says, yes, Soma, I am. And she now Soma feels, Anasuya feels quite good now that she has seen Mata herself in her vision. Mata has asked her to forget about the past, look towards the future, awaken the love, that Mata is trying to bring into all this world in the future generations. So she thinks that, no, I have to help Mata in Mata's great project of awakening love. And so she says to Soma, yes, I'm ready to return Soma. And she smiles and, and she does her pranam to Soma. Soma places her hand on Anasuya's head and gives her, gives her the blessing and now our dear Anasuya is ready to go back to Ayodhya. So my dear friends, we will stop our episode 15 at this point of time. And next time when we meet, we will continue with our episode 16. Thank you very much and have a great day.